Will the Neuralink chip be only for rich people? Will the 1%, the richest, use the chip to achieve superhuman intelligence and distance themselves further from us common people? Now, I've been reading some articles about Neuralink on the internet and I found a peculiar perspective on what could be the future of this device. And it is the following. Since Neuralink and in general brain-computer interfaces are a new and shiny technology, potentially expensive, they will be available only to the wealthiest. And since brain-computer interfaces could boost our mental capacity Capabilities, the rich will become more intelligent than the poor, thus widening the gap between the two. Now, this scenario is certainly dystopian, right? Let's start with a simple question. Will the Neuralink chip be that expensive? The Neuralink chip is still not yet in commerce, so prices are just estimation. You can check the Neuropod video for a breakdown of the potential price, which could be around between $3,000 and $5,000. And taking a look at other existing brain-computer interfaces, this price seems reasonable. Consider, for example, the Utah Array. The Utah Array is a very consolidated brain-computer interface, and in a 2016 article, I read that it could cost about $6,000, which is, let's say, the same order of magnitude as the Neuralink chip cost. But consider also the design differences. For sure, the Utah Array is a bulkier brain-computer interface, but Neuralink should have a more advanced design, which includes also way more channels and electrodes to interface with the brain. And we can also assume the years in advancements could lower the price of this device. Now, are these prices high? Well, it depends on several factors. For example, the country we live in, the kind of insurance that you may get, if you're covered or not by insurance, the brain-computer interfaces. But for many people, certainly they are high prices. But when it comes to biomedical technologies and biomedical implants, for example, these prices are in fact reasonable. Pacemakers, for example, can cost even more and they're used by millions of people worldwide. So saying that the Neuralink chip will be only for the ultra-rich seems a bit of a stretch at the moment. But let's assume for a moment that the price will be even higher than expected and that the Neuralink chip will cost millions of dollars. Then the device will only be available to the wealthiest. But would it make them smarter? Could Neuralink really boost your brain power? Now here's the thing, intelligence is pretty hard to define as a concept and also to measure. It's a very nebulous concept. We could try this, for example, you could try giving your own definition of intelligence in the comments and I am sure that out of 10 people, we will get 10 different answers. Even from a neuroscience perspective, intelligence is hard to pin down because there is no specific intelligence region in the brain. Rather, the higher cognitive functions are scattered throughout the brain. And when it comes to brain-computer interfaces, these devices work because they interface directly with a specific region of the brain. An example of the brain-computer interfaces is that they interact with the motor cortex. For example, we can identify specific regions of the cortex that are associated with specific movements of body parts. Then we can implant electrodes that detect signals in those areas and when people think about moving, for example, a hand, this signal is generated by the brain but is taken by the electrodes, transduced to a command for an external device like a robotic arm. And this works pretty well. But we will need something more advanced than currently existing brain-computer interfaces to stimulate all the brain regions that are associated with higher cognitive functions, with intelligence. Over time, people tried and developed several different solutions for enhancing our brain capabilities. An example is drugs. Although the results with cognitive enhancing drugs are pretty mixed, and there is also the potential problem of addiction. In fact, we do know ways to keep our brain in shape, like for example, proper sleep, diet, and physical exercise. But to boost it up, to boost our intelligence up at the moment, it seems science fiction. So to come back to the richest and the gap between rich and poor, this gap at the moment in terms of health and capabilities seems more related to the fact that rich people have access to better medical treatments, better diet and proper physical exercise, rather than from human enhancement, which is still in its infancy. And as of today, it requires potentially nasty and potentially also dangerous surgical operations. So the benefits not necessarily outweigh the costs. But who knows? Let me know your opinion in the comments. And if you're interested in these kind of videos, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.